All right, Toy Fair just happened in Germany, and we just got new pictures of the new Lego Star Wars 20th anniversary set, so we gotta make a new video as fast as humanly possible, even though it may not even be okay to post this yet, but if I don't, we're all gonna die. All right, so we finally have the new Lego Star Wars 2019 20th anniversary set pictures. And they look okay, they look good for the most part. These sets are really good for what they need to be. It's just, I think now finally seeing these pictures, there is a lot of untapped potential in this wave that I really wanna discuss with you guys and some wonky price points and a few other things. So I hope you'll bear with me throughout the remainder of this video. But I'd like to first start off by just kind of addressing the fact that remakes are not a bad thing. Remaking Lego sets, updating the design, making the design better, adding new minifigures, making the minifigures that we had from the past better, that that's always really great. But what totally tarnishes that, what ruins remakes is when they're sh like the MTT in 2014, or say the Republic Fighter Tank that came out a year or two ago. These are not good remakes. These are meant to be more consumer friendly, to make them more accessible, which is totally understandable, and I get that, but it certainly does no justice to the standards LEGO had already set for themselves many years ago. And in the case of anniversary lineups, the whole purpose is obviously for these sets to be remakes. And so I think anniversary waves like this, every five to 10 years, whatever, it, it are the exception. That makes sense. It makes sense that these sets are remakes. They are meant to be nostalgia based. They are meant to, you know, hit you right in the feels. And I understand that. And so I think that's fine. It's just Lego's distributing most of their resources toward the episode nine sets that are coming out at the end of the year. And maybe even Clone Wars sets or Mandalorian sets or more resistance sets that we don't know about who knows but clearly the money just didn't go into this wave the, the I don't know what this wave was really you know supposed to be it could have just been so much more and I say this because these sets are supposed to be coming out April I think or June I don't know either way there's you know kind of spring summertime and I encourage you guys to go on Google type in Lego Star Wars and then the years you know 2011 2012 2013 2014 these years those years when you go on and you click on the first link, it's gonna be a brick set link, and you just kind of scroll through and you look at what we got for those summer lineups, and there was just so much more to be had. These sets were updated, they were new, they always offered something new and exciting, and there was just no shortage of inspiration or innovation to come from the summer wave. The summer lineup was always so exhilarating and just the best time for LEGO Star Wars sets every year, and granted that obviously has changed with the movies, and that again, that's understandable, I get it. It's just a shame that we get to the 20th anniversary and we get to a lineup like this, and there's just so much left on the table. So Let's get started. We've got Anakin's Pod Racer from The Phantom Menace making its return. I don't think we've had one since 2012, and it really doesn't bring anything new to the table compared to the 2012 version. They changed a few things around. There are some minor differences. Nothing that you could really chalk up to being game changing, but uh, there's only so much you can do with these designs, so that's totally fair. And I think the Pod Racer design is great. The Anakin minifigure is, is also good. The Padme minifigure is really good. You've got a fantastic new hairpiece that they made. It's a whole new mold that looks amazing. Um, they even used the new Harry Potter mid-legs that were introduced last year, which I was not expecting, but they definitely work here. Uh, they gave her Black Widow's hairpiece, which was originally Jyn Erso's hairpiece, if you guys remember back in 2016, and Lego has been abusing it on a lot of minifigures since. And I don't think it really works with Padme here. We've had much better Padme faces in the past, so I think that's kind of unfortunate. The classic Luke Skywalker minifigure, if you guys haven't been keeping up with the leaks, these are the classic minifigures that are being included with the 20th anniversary sets, and they have like an actual 20th anniversary uh, logo printed on the back of the torso, so they're not just exact copies of the classic minifigures. You can't just like pair them up and pretend they're the exact same because of that print that they each have on the back, which is fine. But I really like the stands that they all get the uh, unique uh, prints that are on the place that they uh, come with. I mean, that looks really cool and I'm, I'm looking forward to those. So, I mean, if we wanted to make a set like this that's, you know, easily accessible to your average consumer, then yeah, it makes sense to do Anakin's Pod Racer. I really wouldn't have chosen anything else. I think if LEGO would have been willing to steer more toward the larger sets, it would have been really great. Granted, then Disney's licensing fees would just pile on top and you, if we, even if they did, and what I'm getting at is, even if they did say make a new MTT, it would have been a lot of money. I mean, it would have been like upwards of what? 170, 180 would have been ridiculous. And so I understand it's just kind of unfortunate, but this works. Now I wanna butt in for a second here because there is no Attack of the Clones set, which I think is really unfortunate and our first big missed opportunity because if we're trying to make remakes of what were some really great Lego Star Wars sets, I think that Attack of the Clones, oh my god. Like, let's say we want to do the smaller sets, okay? Anakin Speeder. 
could have had a great new version of that with some new Tusken Raiders and a new, uh, you know, a younger Anakin minifigure. We could have had a new Count Dooku speeder with, a, with another Count Dooku minifig with Yoda. We already have really good versions of those. Again, if they wanted to make larger sets and, and if some of us were willing to swallow the price points, then a new Republic gunship or a new ATTE could have really made the difference here and just could have made this wave so much more exciting. Instead, we don't even have an Attack of the Clones set at all, and I think that's, that's really unfortunate. It. Instead, now we're just going straight to Revenge of the Sith, and we've got the brand new Clone Scout Walker, aka the ATRT, and this is really cool. Like, without a doubt, this is the best. ATRT we've ever had. Even better than the ATRT we had in 2013, the 501st ATRT. If you guys recall, we won't talk about that too much because we know Lego's trying to kind of steer clear of 501st stuff considering they're probably not going to get the green light from Disney to do that, even though fans really want a 501st battle pack. Either way, the ATRT, again, I love the design. I love how it looks on the top. I love the articulation. I love everything about it, the detail on the top. It's all there and it all looks really awesome. And uh, also, I mean, like, you know, the, I love the feet and, you know, just everything thing about it. This is the ultimate ATRT. It's just the scale is a little off. I do wish that LEGO had sized it down a bit because ATRTs were really never meant to be that big, but that's nitpicking. This is really cool and I'm really looking forward to it. You got a Kashyyyk Trooper included here to man it and you also do have a new Wookiee, which is very exciting, kind of like an infantry variant, which is you know awesome because if you're doing a Kashyyyk mock or anything of the sort, you finally have a really nice infantry style Wookiee that you can just get multiple of and I think that's really cool. It doesn't have the ammo strap on the front uh, or the back and that's what makes it unique, the mold anyway, and so that's really cool. The barrier in front of him really giving me those vibes uh, from the original Battlefront 2 game. And then also you do have uh, the turret on the front there and that looks really cool. Almost like, it kind of looks like a turret that you would see in Halo. Either way, um, the battle droid uh, is thrown in here as well. You also do have a brand new tri-droid which is just kind of updated to fit 2019 standards. So you got the stud shooter on the front. The classic minifigure included here is Darth Vader and that's really exciting. I always remember as a kid how big of a deal it was when I finally uh, was able to get my hands on a, a Darth Vader minifig. I, I actually started out with the magnet uh, first. So yeah, any of you guys remember the magnets? That was a long time ago. But yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, he's got his own base there printed as well, and so that's really cool. He, he will also, of course, have the 20th anniversary print on the back of his torso, but that'll be covered up by the cape, so that's fine. Now, this one will also retail for $29.99, and if you ask me, this is a much better deal than the Pod Racer. but if you stick around for the whole video, I'm going to start to discuss some of the sets that I also wish were in place at this one. Next up for A New Hope, I guess, this set is really exciting. The brand new Imperial Dropship, a direct throwback to the original from 2008. I remember when I was first getting started out on YouTube as a kid, and this set was just so cool, the original version. What LEGO has done here is they basically created a new battle pack out of it, and they've obviously thrown in the classic Han Solo minifigure, which looks awesome, by the way. I love how they're going all in with the megaphone and the stud for the blaster and everything. That's really great. He's got his own base, and again, he'll have the print on the back of the torso. But the inclusion of that minifigure then racks it up to $19.99, as opposed to the typical $14.99 that battle packs are now, um, which is really great, and honestly, that's okay. And I think that's really awesome. But if I can just take one quick step back, what I wish LEGO had done instead of the ATRT is I wish that they had also given the original Clone Troopers Battle Pack from 2006 the same treatment as the Imperial Dropship here made a new and updated and improved version of that original Clone Trooper Battle Pack that I think meant so much to so many people. It literally got me started into LEGO Star Wars again and got me started on YouTube. So if LEGO was able to maybe take that set as well, make an updated Battle Pack out of it and throw in another classic minifigure, racking that up to 1999, I think people would have enjoyed that and appreciated that set a lot more than the ATRT. Either way, this is really great because this is obviously going to now be the best way to get the brand new Stormtroopers with those new helmets. Say what you will about them, whether you like them or not. You get three of them in this set, and that is awesome. I mean, damn, that, that that is just a direct line to finally being able to army build with those new Stormtroopers, and that's really cool. They're not going to be as limited, and then we get this brand new Shadow Trooper with the new Stormtrooper helmet with his own gray printing, and it's obviously all in black now. That looks really cool, and this is just the perfect update to the original set, and I also love how on the actual dropship, LEGO used dark blue instead of the regular blue. Obviously, you have all the different positions to seat the minifigures still there. You have stud shooters on there now because we're living in 2019 and then you got the cockpit um, for the Shadow Trooper to pilot it just like the original even though it made no sense. LEGO kept it consistent and they didn't update it and change it to be a TIE pilot or anything. It's still the Shadow Trooper. This is a really perfect example of how LEGO can take a set, update the minifigures, update the build and make it better without selling themselves and LEGO fans short. And now we've also got the new Snowspeeder and this is coming in at a whopping 
$39.99, and that's that's crazy, man, because there's there's nothing new here. You know, I mean, you, of course, you have the brand new classic Lando minifigure, which is really exciting because not many people had the original Cloud City. Not many people had the opportunity to get this Lando. And of course, now he's going to have the 20th anniversary print on the back of his torso underneath that cape. But I mean, you won't see that. And so it's still that minifigure. And I think that's really cool. And this is definitely the classic minifigure I'm looking forward to the most. But as for the rest of the set, I mean, Lego mastered snow speeders. There really isn't anything else that they can do to make the Lego snow speeder better. I mean, they just obviously updated a few stickers here, changed a few small pieces around, stud shooter on the back. I mean, the tow cable's still there. It's just a regular snow speeder. There's barely anything new going on here, and that's fine because the design still works. The turret is, uh, you know, a standard Hoth turret. There isn't really too much to marvel at here. You got a stud shooter planted on there too, just updating these designs to fit more with uh, the standards that we have now, and that's okay. The minifigures, I think, are actually really interesting because obviously last year we got new X-Ring pilot helmets and they didn't look good man they were really big and really like balloon shaped it was it was bad if you if you guys got the new x-wing those were not a good new piece and they were definitely a step back and i think from the looks of it maybe lego recognized that because you look at luke and dak ralter in this set and they have the old helmets back again and that's really great because lego really did not need to fix something that was never broken these helmets have always worked and i'm glad that they brought them back for this set hopefully those new helmets they tried to make stay gone because those did not work as nice as the visors might have been so this set for 39.99 Man, if that Lando minifigure wasn't included, I would absolutely not pick this one up. And we're already at the final set now, the brand new Slave 1. That's it, man. It's only five sets to celebrate the 20th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars. And, man, that, that's not a lot. Um, and I think that kind of sucks. But uh, what sucks even more is that this set is $120. $120. $120 for what looks to be a set that should absolutely drop somewhere in the range of maybe 70 to 90 but then again you pile on Disney's fees and it just shoots right up. It's a shame, man. Especially for people like in Canada or other parts of the world where these prices are just even worse. I, I can't imagine, man. Because there's no way I would even consider spending, I think, what it's going to be like $160 in Canada. It's, it's out of control. And I mean, I, I would absolutely advise everyone against buying this set if you have to pay that much money. I mean, $120 is already a decision you'll have to make for yourself, but anything more than that, please. Anyway, the final classic minifigure is Princess Leia here, and that looks really cool. Again, she'll have the 20th anniversary print on the back of her torso, so that's, you know, definitely looking forward to that. Um, Han Solo included here. This is kind of a step down from the betrayal at Cloud City Han Solo that has the double molded boots and the side leg printing, but obviously you can't come to expect that um, in, in a standard retail set like that, so that's understandable, and it really doesn't make too much of a difference. He looks fine. Um, and then we also do have the Han Solo in Carbonite piece, and that's great to see back. That's still a great piece, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, Boba Fett is back again. I don't think there's anything new going on with him or for Lom. Um, and then finally, what we do have here, though, is a brand new Zuckus, and that's really exciting. I think this is our first time getting Zuckus, and this, I mean, he looks just as good as he did in the leaked photos that we've been seeing. So that's all really exciting. The minifigures look uh, and are pretty much as solid as I think any of us could hope for. Um, it's just... Uh, you know, and again, the Slave 1, we, we can uh, we can pretty much guess what the features are going to be. They're going to be pretty similar to the UCS Slave 1, just obviously on a smaller scale, or similar to the features of the Slave 1 that we had back in 2010. So you'll have the pilot seat that adjusts with the position of the Slave 1. The back will be able to open. You'll have, you know, the rotating guns. Pretty much all the same stuff, which is okay. A bunch of people definitely expressed interest in this being a Django Fett Slave 1, which I think was definitely, unfortunately, wishful thinking. And I mean, even as a big prequel fan, I would have loved that. Not many people got the original Django Fett Slave 1. I, it's always been a set that I've wanted. And, and, you know, to get a brand new version of it in 2019 would have been awesome. But at the same time, you know, I imagine Disney or, and Lucasfilm, they may not have wanted Lego to do that. You know, who knows uh, what went on behind the scenes. And we also haven't had a Slave 1 uh, at this size since 2010. So it's it's fair that we finally get, uh, you know, an updated version. So I understand why they didn't wouldn't have wanted it to be Django's. Um, so, I mean, I get that. It would have been great. We did just have Django and Young Bo with the hyperdrive ring last year, though, too. So you got to remember that. Um, but I mean... It sucks, man, because this this all these sets are really good. It's just the price point of this Slave One doesn't work. The price point of the Snowspeeder doesn't work. You get 
to the end of this list, you get to the end of these pictures, and I, I, I finally just went through pretty much every year of LEGO Star Wars to see what LEGO maybe could have done, what I maybe would have liked to have seen in the 20th anniversary lineup. And I'd like to preface this final portion of the video with, obviously a lot of these expectations aren't necessarily realistic. So you can't have too many big sets in one wave. You kind of have to be reasonable. And so I will try to address that as I bring up these ideas that I had here. And just with Attack of the Clones, like I mentioned, to fill that void, and we don't even have anything for Return of the Jedi, by the way, if you didn't notice. Again, for Attack of the Clones, they could have remade Anakin Speeder or Count Dooku Speeder if they wanted to do a smaller set, if they were willing to do bigger sets, a brand new Republic gunship or a brand new ATTE, because we haven't had new versions of those since 2013. I don't really count the Rebels ATTE, by the way. Would have been awesome because those obviously are, are you know, really incredible vehicles to have as Lego sets. They're just two very exciting vehicles that always offer a lot in terms of features and playability and minifigure potential. And for Revenge of the Sith, like I brought up with the Imperial Drop ship segment, I absolutely would have done the new version of the Clone Troopers Battle Pack, obviously much like the Imperial Dropship, not actually calling it a Clone Troopers Battle Pack and instead throwing in a classic minifigure and upping it to 1999. So we still get the Battle Pack, um, just not actually, you know, classifying it as one. I think that would have been a much more exciting set in, in place of the ATRT, or maybe even like a new Grievous wheel bike with Boga. We haven't had a new Grievous wheel bike since 2014. We haven't had a new Lego Boga since like 2005. So I think that would have been awesome. Um, or maybe they could have done a new update to the ultimate lightsaber duel. If you guys remember that set, that was one that not many people got either. And I think that would have been really cool because that would have been a really nice and definitive Revenge of the Sith set that they could have done also with Anakin and Obi-Wan, a nice Mustafar set is something we haven't had in a long time or maybe they could have done a new arc 170 the arc 170s are amazing and um they they just offer so much again in terms of playability and features and, and the many figures that they could have changed we haven't had a new arc 170 since 2010 either for empire strikes back if lego again were willing to make some larger sets they could have done a brand new imperial star destroyer i know that there's a rumored ucs imperial star destroyer that's potentially coming out at the end of the year and if that's the case then it makes sense why we don't see one here but in 2007 when i finally got the imperial star destroyer that was one one of the most exciting moments as a LEGO fan. I mean, just getting started, that was phenomenal. And, and to have a new version of it, considering my dumbass never actually finished it when I was an eight-year-old kid, would have been would have been really awesome. And again, since they skipped over Return of the Jedi, if maybe we could have had an update to the Death Star Final Duel, like, I mean, we just had one in 2015, so maybe not. Um, or maybe if they could have done a brand new Rancor Pit or Jabba Sail Barge, which I think the Sail Barge is definitely wishful thinking and probably outside the realm of reality, because that's another big set. Um, or just any other iconic moment from Return of the Jedi to make for a nice updated set. To have one really good set for each movie I think would have been ideal here and that's just not what Lego appears to have done and again that all kind of boils back down to they're putting all their money all their resources into the episode 9 sets at the end of the year they're working on new resistance sets which have all kinds of new molds and new pieces and faces they're working even on maybe some new Clone Wars season 7 or Mandalorian sets that we may not know about yet there's a lot in the pipeline so I understand it's just a bummer as somebody who always really cherished the summertime for getting a massive and incredible new wave of Lego Star Wars sets. It just kind of sucks that that isn't the case anymore because of the movies and because of how things have changed now and that we get to the 20th anniversary of Lego Star Wars as a theme and we just don't have that great of a lineup to celebrate. I just was expecting more, but I don't want to sound too negative because like I just mentioned throughout the video, the sets themselves that we are getting for what they need to be, as I said at the start of the video, are good. It's just, I think there were better choices, there were better options, there was more potential. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Let me know if you think that this is just kind of being blown out of proportion or if you think that these sets are great, man. I, I, I think that a lot of us can agree that the Slave One is pretty pricey and, and so is the Snow Speeder. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around for the whole thing. Right now I'm working on the brand new uh, Spider-Man PS4 suit. Still a slow, tedious process, but I'm working on him. I got photos going up over on Patreon, all those places. And I'll finally be posting reveal pictures of him over on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook if you're interested in all of that stuff. Otherwise, Otherwise, my next video will be, you know, honestly, I don't know what my next video will be. It'll be on something, though, and it should be great. I hope I'll catch you there or in one of those places. And again, uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, guys, I'll catch you next time. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.